services where we're still gathering, we're still worshiping together, and uh, Stephen's still bringing the word to us, and we're learning more about our Savior and what he's done for us and how we can live for him. But obviously we're living in a, in a very uncertain time right now that nobody really knows what's going on and nobody knows what's going to happen anytime soon. Um, but if there's anything that we learn through life, it's that no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening, Christ is the only thing that we need. And that's kind of the theme of the, the songs that I lead you in this morning, that Lord, I need you. Christ is enough for me. So why don't you sing these with us? Lord, I come. Well, good morning, everyone. Good to see each and every one of you here in our uh, digital church. So thank you for joining us. I hope that you are doing well. 
And uh, we want to start off with some particular songs today that they line up with uh, our me- our message today when we go to John chapter 18 here in just a little bit. Well, once again, good morning. Thank you for joining us for our service here at Rolling Hills Baptist Church. Um, again, our, our digital campus, we, we change the name every Sunday, but uh, good to see everyone. Uh, as I normally do, I'd like to do a quick check of uh, who's on just to say good morning and connect in that way but first let's ask god to uh, bless us today uh, as we do our best to worship him uh, even here online lord we thank you for this day we thank you for um, the gift of life and and strength and lord we thank you for an opportunity even though we are, are sp- we are <coughs> we are spread out lord uh, we thank you for this opportunity to Uh, gather online and so we ask today as we do our best uh, to to think through the songs and think through the scriptures that we read Lord we pray that you would give us insight uh, into you and Lord we pray that you would guide us with your Holy Spirit and if there's anything in our lives that need uh, changing if there's anything in our life that needs um, encouraging Lord we pray that you would do that uh, in this time in Jesus name amen Again, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, just want a quick quick roll call to see who's there. I'm not really taking roll, of course, but I uh, just wanted to say good morning um, to, to some. I'm just kind of flipping through here. Um, that is great news, Brother Paul. Uh, we've been praying for Brother Paul. It looks like, I believe it said, there's no virus, uh, but there are some cardio issues, and we'll continue to pray for Paul. Uh, good morning, uh, Brother Mike. Thanks for uh, doing uh, what you do here at um, uh, here at the church, especially in terms of our Facebook, Miss Beverly, good to see you this morning. Miss Dawn, the Carols, good morning, good to see you. Uh, Cindy Fowler, uh, good morning. Uh, Brother Paul, Sandy, good to see you. Brother Johnny, uh, uh, Miss Terry, thank you for joining us. Miss Jackie, thank you. Um, the other, I'm sure there's other names I, I'm I'm missing, but it's good to see each and every one of you online. Good morning, Miss Gail. Looks like uh, is on here, and, and hi to Lily uh, and AJ and Donnie. Glad that hopefully you're joining as well. Um, good to see Paige and um, and uh, Christopher as well. And so thank you for joining us. And if there's other names on here that I've missed, I can only see a little bit. So uh, thank you for joining us this this morning again i hope you've had a good uh, good week uh, since we since we've seen you and um, i hope that you are doing well and you're staying encouraged uh, during this really uh, crazy time uh, if you need anything uh, i would um, ask that it's in the comments and uh, probably mike's already pinned it we do have a digital connection card so if there's anything that you need feel free to fill out that card it's a way to immediately contact us if you have a prayer request that you want added to the prayer request list if there's some need that you have feel free to fill out that digital connect card uh, and we can document that even if you make a decision for Christ maybe you're visiting with us um, virtually this morning uh, and you make a decision for Christ we we want to know about that we want to help you on our spirit on your spiritual journey and so uh, please fill out that card uh, it'll come to me and then uh, we'll put it um, forward to the ones who need it but again thank you so much for for doing that uh, again we we hope that um, you are doing well uh, a few things uh, I always like um, how those uh, how you've been sending in pictures of how you've been engaging with our services and with the church uh, for uh, for the past few weeks um, a couple ones I just want to throw out there this morning. This was sent to me by Brother Dwayne uh, the other day from his truck uh, and how he's engaging with our church on Facebook. And, and Brother Dwayne uh, keeps up uh, with us and um, prays for us and we pray for him. And so uh, this is Brother Dwayne uh, this uh, last week uh, watching the service and then... Um, uh, this was last week. It looks like there was a social distancing uh, gathering at, at the Browns house and there's Maxine and Jim and Sandy uh, and JP and Paige. And so there's a couple more there, I'm sure. But a hey, social distancing, getting together and uh, gathering uh, to worship. That was a cool picture. And this was cool. Um, I grabbed it real quick. I hope she didn't mind. But Miss Jackie Williams and uh, was watching from her porch. 
and of course she has her iPad up and uh, and her cell phone and and so that's cool that's the one way that she's watching our service so I, I thought that was uh, I thought thought that was neat and so um, uh, however you do watch we appreciate you for watching uh, and still engaging in the life of the church and um, uh, send us those pictures I know Jackie Lundy sent one of her watching uh, with, with her pet that was cool and, and Mike's been putting some different things online and so we appreciate that and, and seeing what others are are doing uh, a few announcements we are still and you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong Miss Jean or Brother Johnny uh, still collecting cards to uh, to take to a nursing home and leave out there to encourage the uh, the residents there and so if if you can take um, some time if you have some cards you can get some pretty inexpensively fill them out drop them off there's a bag uh, under the driveway um, at the church and you can feel free to um, uh, to do that just sign your name you don't have to address it or anything and they'll give it to residents to encourage them so don't forget about that now this week is uh is holy week as as we say and uh right before easter and so easter is next week and of course uh we're, we're going to have to keep in a, in a different format <clears throat> probably the first Easter for some of y'all in a long time. Um, I, I can't think of a time that I've not been uh, in the sanctuary uh, uh, of a church on Easter. And so um, we're, we're still going to celebrate Easter as best as possible, uh, even doing it through electronic means. And so as we go through this week, um, I'm going to post some devotionals throughout the week, um, walking through uh, some significant features in the book of John, uh, and uh, we're thinking upon uh, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And so Sunday we can celebrate that Jesus lives. And so uh, uh, thinking about the closures, the, clo the closures at the church uh, due to the order of the governor, uh, our mayor, and our, our president and their guidelines, um, it, it's, not a, it's not a wise decision to have gatherings. I am thankful the governor did say that churches are essential and I believe uh, they are essential and for the spiritual good, for the community's good. Uh, but if you take the essential part and then put it with what the guidelines are of gathering, it still is not wise for us to meet. And so that means there is no brotherhood um, meeting. There's no sisters in spirit meeting. However, you can contact each other and, and have um, different things going on uh, and and uh, plan things that's fine um, so there's not a regular business meeting uh, as well however we will have documentation uh, available for this month I just wanted to to let you know uh, on uh, on that um, uh, however uh, we are still ascent doing the essential things at church and uh, still ministering, uh, still doing things. We'll, we'll have some announcements of things that have been done at the church here uh, shortly and God's blessing. And, uh, and that comes through uh, the great people of Rolling Hills Baptist Church and the friends of Rolling Hills Baptist Church. Uh, again, um, we will pray for all the needs of our church uh, at the end of today's service. And so get ready in just a little while to put your prayer requests online. And then we'll, we will put the prayer requests and look at them and pray for them. We'll do that in just a moment. There's another song, and I think let's... I thank Brother Jordan uh, for singing for us this morning and leading us in worship. He took his time from his schedule to, to sing a couple songs for us. One is one very familiar, the first one. This second one uh, will have some familiar words, but it's probably a new song to many of you. Uh, but it has a great message, and it ties into today's sermon. And so I thank Jordan for taking his time to record himself singing and playing. And, um, and Michaela, we thank her for filming this, and she did a great job filming it. And so uh, we think, we're very thankful for the friends of our church who, um, who help minister and so we, we appreciate them both. So this is our second song for today. Uh, it's a great song. It's called Christ is Enough. The words will be on the screen. So if you don't know it, uh, you'll learn it. There's some familiar words in there.
follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning What a beautiful song with a beautiful message that Christ is all we need. And in this time, we need a reminder of that Christ is all we need. And, and that knowledge that we have, knowing that he is all, our, all we need, helps us to be resolved to follow Jesus. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to John chapter 18 uh, as you're turning there. Uh, but while you do that, I, uh, I love that. Um, uh, I love that message that mm -hmm. Melissa just uh, put on our comments. I just want to just praise God for that that uh, his grace is in uh, Melissa's life and it's very obvious what he's done and so uh, we uh, we rejoice with you Miss uh, with Miss Melissa uh, and and go what God uh, has done uh, in your life and we praise God you're still cancer free and uh, we serve a good God and so uh, at the end we're gonna pray a uh, prayer of Thanksgiving for that as aware with our prayer request uh, as well and so thank you for sharing with us and you know, feel free to share your praise reports as well John chapter 8 uh, this this morning, I was thinking back on what Jordan uh, just sang for us and and led us uh, so well in 
Um, we always, I think as Christians, we have that resolve that we want to follow Jesus and we want to follow him very faithfully. And we say uh, no turning back and we, we don't want to uh, turn back from our decision to follow Jesus. And may this be very true of us this this morning, but oftentimes we find that our desire does not always play out in the way that, that we would like. And how many times have we proclaimed, even as that song said, that Christ is enough, but then things of life happen, and sometimes scary things, and sometimes disappointing things, and we find ourselves slipping from that ideal uh, that that we proclaim. Or even worse off, I would say, uh, there are those who may say, and they may sing this lyrics, yes, I'm saved, yes, I, I'm a Christian, uh, but yet their heart has never been transformed by Jesus Christ. They look like a follower. They seem to act like the follower. They seem to know some things about Jesus, but their hearts are far from God. As you find your place in John chapter 18, we're going to see both of these cases unfold. The one who is a follower of Christ and legitimately uh, wants to follow Christ, but something happens in their life and all of a sudden they found themselves uh, denying Christ and, and not following how they wanted to follow. And then we're going to see the case where there's somebody who claimed to be a follower of Christ. But in the end, we're shown that they were not a true follower of Christ. You'll see Judas and you'll see Peter. This morning, I want to bring a message that's actually a uh, part two uh, from a message that I did in the fall of 2019 as we were going through the book of John. We were looking at John chapter 13, where Jesus is betrayed by Judas during the Last Supper. Now, today, we're in John chapter 18. And John chapter 13 to John chapter 18, uh, that's a lot of chapters in between. And it almost may seem like maybe months or weeks have pa or passed since uh, John chapter 13 and the Last Supper. However, from about John chapter 12 to John, uh, throughout the rest of the book of John, is really a span of only a week or uh, a couple weeks if you take it right to the end of the book of John, but the story from the triumphant entry to uh, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is only a week. And John is very detailed in his writing about the last hours of Jesus' life. Jesus has just finished his farewell address, and he prayed for his disciples, and then he leads them to what we call the Garden of Gethsemane, where the other gospel writers, John doesn't write this down, but he writes that Jesus prayed alone to the Father, and now the hour is here. I want us to read this text, and I hope you have your Bibles open, and it'll be displayed for you this morning if you want to read along. Uh, on the screen, we're going to look at verse 1 through 11, verse 15 through 18, and verse 26 and 27. Uh, I want to only show you a portion of this scripture that talks about the denial of Jesus and the betrayal of Jesus. And the title of this sermon is The, the Great Betrayal, I guess you would say, uh, part, part 2. Um, let me get to the right uh, passage of scripture here. You give me just a moment. Sorry about that. A little technical difficulty. <laughs> Sorry, that's on my part. Uh, my part. Uh, ver verse one of chapter eighteen. Verse one of chapter eighteen. If it's not on the screen, it's fine. Uh, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook uh, Kidron where there was a garden and into which he he entered and his disciples and Judas was also which betrayed him knew the place for Jesus oftentimes resorted uh, there with his disciples just then having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees 
Uh, they came with lanterns and torches and weapons. And Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon them, went forth and said unto them, uh, Whom seek ye, or, or who do you seek? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. Uh, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and they fell to the ground. Then he asked them again, Who do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered and said, I have told you that I am he, and if therefore you seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake of them which thou gavest, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and, and smote, or he cut off the ear of the high priest's servant. And the servant's name was Malchus. Then Jesus said unto Peter, Put up thy sword into your sheath. The cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? Now, if you would go to verse 15. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple, that the disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the place of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter, then, then said the, the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, and brought in Peter. I'm sorry. And then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art thou not also one of this man's disciples? And he said, I am not. The servants and officers stood there who made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. If you look at verse 26, actually verse, go to verse 25, and Simon Peter stood and warmed himself, and they said, therefore unto him, are you not one of his disciples? And he denied it and said, I am not. And one of the servants of the high priest, being uh, being the kinsman or being related to the one whose ear, whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did I not see you in the garden with him? And Peter denied again, and immediately the rooster crowed. And may God bless the reading of his word as we study it this morning. I was doing a little thinking about the subject matter that we're speaking of today. And it dawned on me, and I was thinking about music that we sing during Easter time. It seems that music is always connected to Easter in some way. It really it struck me that we do not often sing songs about Jesus, betrayal, and arrest. Now, you might be able to think of a song that talks about Jesus' betrayal and arrest. And if you do, feel free to put it uh, in, the, in the comments. But in most of our hymns and songs, we don't really think about that very much. Some songs allude to it or may have a line or maybe a small verse about it. But you don't often hear a song that would, that would speak to the subject of Jesus betrayal and arrest and I, I think one of the reasons why is betrayal and denial are very awful things and we don't want to be betrayed and we don't want to be denied and as Christians just the idea of our Lord being betrayed and being denied is a horrible thing because we love the Lord even the disciples didn't like the idea. Think about what happened in John chapter 13. Jesus mentioned that he was going to be betrayed and the disciples broke out into a fervor and they said, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? They didn't want to be the one who was going to be the betrayer. Yet, in that group of 12, one of Jesus' followers was the one who betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. In this text, in comparison to the other gospel writers, uh, Jesus has just finished praying in a garden that we know as Gethsemane. John describes where this garden was located. It was near the book, the brook in the first verse that we that we read the book the brook Kidron. The garden was not unknown to the disciples, for it was a place that they regularly met. And Judas would know where they were at as well, so he knew the plan 
And this is how Judas found them so easily. He knew they would be in the garden. It was a place that they would go normally. And then you see in this text, Judas arrive on the scene with the soldiers. This is a band or a detachment of soldiers. It could have been, scholars tell us, it could have been hundreds of soldiers come to arrest Jesus Christ. The chapter then unfolds and we see scenes almost like a movie of Jesus being arrested and then we see his trial and then we see the denial of Simon Peter of Jesus Christ. And so it goes in and out and in and out in John chapter 18, lets you know all that is happening in there. As we move today in uh, uh, towards Easter week, towards Holy Week, I want us to reflect on these crucial moments of betrayal and denial that we see in this text. I want to break this into two teaching components this morning. I want us to examine how Jesus responded to betrayal and why he responded to betrayal in such a way. And then I want to examine the denial of Jesus Christ. And I want to think about how often it is so easy, how we are prone to deny Jesus Christ. And I have uh, two statements on that this morning. And I want us to think about it like this. Number one, Jesus was betrayed by man to show himself faithful to the Father and to his followers. Jesus was betrayed by man to show himself faithful to the Father and to his followers. So think about what's going on here. We know there's a big scene. Judas is coming near to Christ. He's coming with soldiers. He's coming with the officers of the chief priests. Judas comes to Jesus. And we know from the other Gospels, Judas leans in and kisses Jesus on the cheek. But the details that John gives us are very stunning because they demonstrate how Jesus showed himself faithful to the Father and even his followers, even in this time of betrayal. So how did Jesus, here's the question, how did Jesus show himself faithful? during his betrayal. Well, number one, Jesus approached the betrayal and the betrayer. Jesus approached. Don't miss what verse four of of chapter 18 says. Verse four of of chapter 18. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him. Notice these two words went forth, or your Bible may say, went forward. Jesus approached this betrayer. He approached this betrayal. Jesus knew what was going to happen. And none of this took the Son of God by surprise. Jesus could have walked away. Jesus could have called the heavens down, and he could have called the angels down and stopped this, But Jesus went forward. This is a level of supernatural divine courage that has never been seen in in human history. This is also the beauty of the gospel message that God himself stepped out in human history and he stepped forward towards sinful man. Who's that? That's you and that's me. Jesus didn't just say, hey, I'm over here. Jesus stepped forward to all of us who have betrayed him, who have denied him. The Bible says, He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we may become the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus approached the betrayer and the betrayer. Think about this. Jesus was also submissive even when he held all the power. Jesus was submissive to this betrayal even when he held all the power. Jesus was in charge of everything that was going on. 
Yet he humbled and he submitted himself to the Father's will of the Father allowing the Son to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. But even in that time, and I think this is a message for us, and it was a message for those who were in the garden of who they were really dealing with. Jesus gave a glimpse of his almighty power. Look at verse 6. Jesus asked, Who do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And then he said, look at the, look at the words in verse, in verse 5 and 6. I am he. Now in the Greek text, the words are just I am. The reason that it's I am and he said I am, he was showing who he actually was. He literally said, I am Yahweh. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one with all the power. And in that moment, when Jesus said, I am, his identity came through and they fell down. They fell backwards. This is a response of those who had seen and experienced the power of God. Think about what was going on. The, the hands that they were binding with ropes and arresting and dragging away were the same hands that created the universe from nothing, that formed man and woman out of the dust of the ground. They were the same men, they were the same hands rather, that healed the sick and that raised the dead. And it makes me wonder how much in, in, in our lives do we forget who Jesus is? That sometimes I believe we take Jesus and relegate him to our good life coach and our good life teacher who just simply tells us, eh, it's going to be okay. Don't worry. Be happy, as the old song says. But Jesus is not just a good teacher or a good worker. Jesus is God. And we must remember who he is and how powerful he actually is. Jesus is not simply a humble carpenter with wise words, but Jesus is God himself. No wonder Paul wrote in Romans 9 verse 20, Who are you, O man, to respond to God? A few sentences later, Peter is seen trying to protect Jesus Christ. And I believe Peter was doing this out of a, a pure motive. But Jesus rebukes him and says, don't do this, Peter. Should I not, verse 11, should I not drink of the cup my father has prepared? Jesus was submissive to this, even when he held all the power. He showed his faithfulness by approaching, by submitting, but also Jesus showed his faithfulness by protecting his followers. That's verse 8 and 9. Jesus is asked again, uh, Jesus asked again, who are you looking for? And they said, well, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I am he, let these others go. So think about the, the scenario. Jesus protects even the most zealous follower that he has. Peter lunges with the sword and cuts off the ear of Malchus, the high priest's servant. And Jesus, the Bible says in the other gospel accounts, healed the ear and, and, and attached the ear back on. And I think in this, this kind of protected Peter. He also protected the rest of his disciples. He said, I am he, I'm the one you look for. Please let them go. Verse 8, let the rest of these go their own way. This reminds us of Jesus being the great protector. In John chapter 10, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, but a hireling who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Jesus prayed in the high priestly prayer that his disciples would be protected. And here what he does in just one chapter over, he protects his sheep. And he said, I would not lose one. He is the protective shepherd. May I ask, 
Are you in his protection this morning? Are you in the protection of Jesus Christ? Or are you on the other side with the swords and with the lanterns and with the betrayal and the hatred in your heart? Are, are you on the Lord's side this morning? Jesus is arrested and he's brought in to the courtyard of the high priest. And Peter and John follow. And the Bible says um, that it's Peter and the other disciples. In the book of John, uh, we understand that John never names himself. He always calls himself as the other one or the other disciple. And so we understand that Peter and the other disciple, verse 16, go to the door of the high priest's court. And it's apparent from verse 16 and 17 that, um, that we have John having a tie with the high priest in some way. And so they, they, they have, um, they, they knock on the door and the person inside, the servant girl says, oh, this is John. We know him. And he goes inside and asks to bring Peter in. And then we come to the famous denial of Peter. And so uh, we understand that Jesus was betrayed by man to show himself faithful to the Father and his followers. But second, uh, and, and lastly today, Jesus was denied by man so that we may be accepted and forgiven by the Father. Jesus was denied by man so that we may be accepted and forgiven by the Father. This is in verse 15 through 18, verse 25 through 27. So here, here we are. Here's Peter. Here's the great defender of Christ. This is the one who said, I will die for you, Lord. They will never hurt you. He sees his master afar off and he sees him taken away at night. And then he is thrust into an illegal trial. John Calvin says that it's exceedingly thoughtless in Peter to try to prove his faith by the sword while he could not do so by his tongue. There is a servant girl at the door, a girl who is unknown, and asks, are you one of his followers? And Peter says, no. And, and here comes uh, Peter. And I hope this isn't a reach, but the text tells us that after Peter denies Jesus, he, he goes and he goes with the rest of them hanging by the fire. Sometimes the reason we deny Jesus is we simply want to blend in with the crowd and with society. It's so easy just to say there ain't nothing to this Jesus stuff. Uh, why, 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 are, why are you tuning in online to church? Uh, why, why do you go to church? Why, wh what is all this about? It's easy just to blend in with the crowd. It, it's, it's easy to simply just say, I, I don't even want to give this a second thought. Peter is under a lot of pressure. He's now scared for his own life. And so he, so he distances himself from Christ. He distances himself from his faith. He distances himself with, from, from all the things that he said he followed. This is us. And, and verse 25 says, uh, a second time somebody came up to him and said, Are you not one of these disciples? And he denied it. He said, No, I am not a disciple of him. The, the other gospels say, uh, give the detail that he starts to get angry and says, No, I'm not. Now, here's the big one. The re uh, there's a relative of Malchus. And he was in the garden and he saw Peter cut off the relative's ear. And even though it was dark, there were the Bible says in verse one there were there were torches and there were lamps and lanterns, and Peter had to have been recognized. They saw what this man looked like who cut off his ears, and he said, "Listen, aren't you the one? Aren't you the one 
who did this? Aren't you the follower of Christ that defended him? Uh, the other gospel writer says Peter, Peter cursed. But his words and actions, and in this, he denied Christ. He denied three times that he followed Christ and he knew the Lord. And sometimes this passage stings to us. Why? Why does this sting? Because we've all been Peter, right? We, we've we all heard, the Bible says after that, the, the rooster crowed in verse 27. We have all heard the rooster crow in our lives. There's been times when we've all denied Christ. Not Maybe it not was in our actions. Maybe it was just in our words or in some way. R.C. Sproul said this, It teaches us something hideous, something that we do not want to see, the darkness of our human hearts. This shows us what people are capable of. Even after making a glorious confession and swearing allegiance to Jesus, Peter falls at the moment of truth. This is the fallen human nature. This passage also teaches us, especially in light of Peter's later restoration, what kind of people Jesus died to save. Jesus did not come, Sproul says, to save those who were sinless. There are no such people. He gave himself for people who would betray him and deny him, just like you and me. Where's the hope? Jesus was denied by man so that we may be accepted and forgiven by the Father. Mark 14.72 says this, that Peter went out and he wept bitterly. You think, oh, I deny Christ. There couldn't be any hope for me. No, there's a difference between what Judas did and what Peter did. Peter went out and wept bitterly. This is repentance. One writer says the gospel becomes glorious when we see the depth and power of our sin and we see it as grievous. 2 Corinthians 7.10 says this, and pay attention to the words as we close. For godly grief re produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret. But worldly grief produces death. What's the difference? What's the difference between what Peter did and Judas did? Peter was in godly grief. He was sorry he denied his Lord. He repented to Jesus. He knew he failed. He knew he blew it. But this worldly grief is a grief that's, that's false. It's not true grief. It's, I'm sorry I got caught. I'm sorry I feel morally bad. Or, I'm sorry I didn't get my way. So I'm going to use grief and I'm going to use false confession in order to get still what I want. Godly grief is repentance. Peter denied Christ before men, but he was restored. And Peter was accepted by Christ and by the Father. Judas betrayed Christ. He did feel remorse, the book of Acts tells us. But he never, as far as we can tell, sought restoration. Jesus, though, faced denial and betrayal and demonstrated the great love he has towards all of us who desperately need his free gift of grace. You may be a Jesus denier today. You may not want anything to do with Jesus. You may think everybody who has something to do with Jesus is ridiculous. They are intellectually foolish. Uh, they they don't love they they don't love people, and and all this sort of stuff. Jesus still loves you. Jesus still loves you, and He came for you, so that if you repent and put your faith and trust in Him, guess what? that you can be accepted and forgiven 
by the Father. That is Christianity. Some of you have religion. Some of you understand religion, but you've never understood who Jesus is. Jesus was denied by man so that we can be accepted and forgiven by the Father. Maybe you've never made that decision. Maybe this week you've denied Christ. You've, uh, you've turned your back on Christ in some way. Go to him. You don't have to go to anybody else. You come straight to Christ and he will. And he will forgive you. And it's through his blood that we have the remission of sins. And this is why we're gathered today. Because Jesus submitted to the Father's will, even to humble human betrayal. And he loves you today. That's what we learn from Christ in his betrayal and denial. There's still hope for each one of us through Christ. Thank you for uh, for joining us today, 
and uh, I want to end with uh, end with prayer and um, if, if you have any prayer requests real quickly um, put them in um, put them in the, the chat box uh, I know we've had to do some things with commenting and things like that um, but just make sure if you have a prayer request to put in there let's continue to pray for Paul uh, in, in the hospital and um, let's uh, continue to uplift him and Miss and Miss Linda in prayer let's remember the Jennings family uh, continue to pray for continue to pray for them uh, Sandy said her family in Montana um, let's co uh, continue to pray for um, uh, every everything that's going on with this virus those who are sick those who are affected by it and uh, again uh, if you have a prayer request put it in there real quick or again praising God with uh, Miss Melissa's report and so um, continue to pray for Chris and Duane we will do that I'm sure I'm sure they've been very very busy um, so um, yeah if you have any prayer requests put it in the chat box and, I, and I'll take a glance at it I uh, hear in in just a in just a second but uh, let's go ahead and dismiss and um, and <laughs> yeah yeah you're right miss Jackie <laughs> yeah it's it, it's silly but uh, yeah um, uh, you're right so uh, yeah we're, we're, we're going to pray for them uh, to today um, yeah pray for Paul um, yes yes we love you too brother Paul okay we'll continue to pray um, but let's pray for Jim and, and that possible new job uh, what's going on in his life hey if you see a prayer request uh, heart get, do the heart uh, on on the comment if you can um, yes yep yes brother Johnny we'll pray we'll pray for her as well all right okay um, I'll, I'll take a glance during the prayer and see if there's anything else that comes in let's pray Lord we thank you for uh, this day we thank you for our church family we thank you um, that we can meet online Lord we thank you for um, uh, just what you've done today through our singing, uh, through uh, through through your word, Lord, help us in our lives uh, not to be those who betray you or deny you. Help us to look to Jesus as the model of what uh, of of what He has done for us. Lord, we uh, pray for our church family, the prayer requests. Lord, we pray for the Jennings family. Lord, we pray for. Uh, brother Paul, Lord, as he has his uh, test tomorrow, Lord, we thank you that he doesn't have this virus, and God, we just pray that you would um, that that you would just uh, be gracious to him and heal him. Uh, Lord, we pray for those who um, uh, who watched today, whether they were believers or not. Lord, maybe uh, a seed was planted of, of the gospel in them. Um, Lord, we we pray that that would bear fruit. Um, Lord, we pray for the efforts that we we try to do at our church. Lord, we we pray, um, uh, we pray for them. Lord, we pray for Brother Jim and this uh, new job situation. Lord, we we pray that if it is Your will that You would open the door and let it be good for him. Lord, we pray for um, Chris and Dwayne as they come back. Uh, we pray for their safety and and all that they're uh, trying to. To, to do on the road and so Lord we pray for them uh, Lord uh, we pray uh, for those who are working in health care right now Lord we ask that you would protect them Lord uh, Johnny mentioned Marissa that she that Lord we pray that she would um, be protected and and Lord all those that we know who are working in that field God give them grace Lord for all the prayer requests that are on our prayer request list uh, we pray that you would you would be with them uh, Lord, will keep us all safe and healthy until we can meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, uh, join us tonight at 6 for a devotional service and uh, as we end our day with the Lord. And um, uh, we pray that you're doing well. And thank you so much for everything that everybody does. You, you've been doing such a fantastic job as a church body, caring for one another and uh, encouraging one another. And I... Um, uh, and I, I really love seeing that. I think that that is wonderful. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you for giving. Continue your giving. We do appreciate that. Um, however, you can give either by um, by dropping it off or mailing it in or even giving online. We do appreciate all that you're 
your giving, um, all of your giving um, at the church. Uh, we're still moving forward. And, and so we, we just thank you for all that you do. Again, until we uh, see you at our next online service, thank you for joining us today. And, and we pray God's richest blessings upon you.